do you think it is in the OC one? I can't imagine. Um, your boat is a lot heavier than the other K1 kayaks, and you only have one blade, so it looks very difficult. Do you think we could you could be convinced to jump in one at some point? Maybe. We'll see. I don't know if I can roll it. I'll just stay upside down. <laughs> there we go. That'll be the new challenge to get the Hargroves in OC1 categories <laughs> here. But yeah, no, it looks unfortunately like they did not score the spin on a Michael's um, first run, but that's okay. He's got two more runs. This is a final, so there is three runs. Ooh, the best run counts. Next up, we are going to have Landon Miller. He came in third place yesterday, but he is wanting to get to the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, and he's sitting nice and comfortable in his boat, basically swimming, which is something he likes to do sometimes. <laughs> and, well, the thing is, when you're an OC one, you're, you're almost swimming at all times. You're just like swimming strapped into a tub. It's like a very different type of swimming. We enjoy it. Landon dropping into that snazzy helmet. Coming in for his first ride of three and finals, but catching an unfortunate edge and looking for the loop. Um, not quite maintaining the feature, but it's okay. He still has two more rides. Yeah, we know he's capable of absolutely incredible stuff. Uh, we saw him paddling in the Nottingham feature, throwing some of the highest rides we've seen in OC1. In Actually, I think we saw him score in that competition the highest OC1 ride in, like, possibly in ICF history. I'd have to double check on that, but I, he came over the 500 points in OC1, which is insane. And like, we're gonna see if any of these paddlers are able to best that today, including Landon himself. And they're letting the timer run full length on these paddlers as there are slightly less paddlers in this heat. Um, also, these OC ones take a little bit of time to get back. Once you're like, once you flush, you've now you're now full of water. You're working your way back into the eddy, trying to get over the boil line. It can take a little bit of a little a lot of effort and a long time to get back up to for ready for your next ride. Next up, we have Seth Chappelle from the United States. He has a lot of competition history. Been in the U USA team many, many times, so he knows how to throw down in this kayak. He also competed in C1 later. Coming in for his first ride, dropping in, staying in the feature, going straight for a background house. Into a background house the other direction. These boats are heavy. He is pulling it around, going in for a roundhouse into a back blunt. Yeah, remember, they're doing this with 40, at this point, 40 kilograms of water in his boat. But having an unfortunate edge grab, that was a pretty good score for Seth Chappelle's first ride. Yeah, it looks like it's hovering just under the 100 point mark. We'll see if he's the first paddler to break that 100 in OC1 year. Look at that beautiful clean flashback. Now what a flashback is, we like to use different terminology sometimes for tricks that look very similar, but a flashback is spinning into a backstab that you, you clean. It makes it a little easier to clean it around because you already have that spin momentum. Here we see him throw around, muscling that boat around into a nice back roundhouse there. Spinning it around near the end just before he catches an edge here right there window shading himself up and underneath the feature We're still waiting for the judges to finalize his score. It's looking around 85 points What do you think the top score is gonna be for OC1? so after seeing Jordan paddle yesterday I think we are more than capable of seeing 400 point rods in OC1 here. Yes. I think that is a very big possibility, especially with three runs to go. First run for Seth Chappelle coming in at 61, 67. But yeah, I am very much looking forward to seeing potentially a, another Blunt McNasty from Jordan. Uh, we've seen some absolutely phenomenal um, uh, Blunts from all directions, clean and even a Pan Am from Seth in the past here on this feature. So. Jordan dropping in for his first ride, going for the blunt into that McNasty. Does he stick it? Unfortunately, flushing off the back of that feature here at a slightly lower level good wave. But right off the bat, the, the thing is, the blunt McNasty, it's not, it's in itself a trick. It is. So a blunt McNasty is normally two tricks combined, but we still have it as one trick. He landed the blunt inside the feature, but didn't maintain the McNasty part, so they are going to give him the blunt of 30 points. Yeah, so th that's why you'll see some crazy high points. We saw that in the uh, men's category, whereas uh, uh, it, it, it 
I believe, in the quarterfinals. Uh, Dane and um, uh, Mason fighting it for those top positions there. And one of the big things we saw in that score difference was uh, Mason choosing to do Blunt McNasty's, which adds the link bonus to the Mc Blunt and the McNasty, whereas Dane chose to go right into those pistol flips, meaning there's no added link bonuses. His score coming in with 18.33, so that'll put him into second place. Yeah, we know he's going to be wanting to go much bigger than that. I'm pretty sure we're going to see him maybe put in a safe run on the second to make sure that he puts himself high up on that podium away from risk. But I'm sure we're going to be seeing him watching to go for another Blunt McNasty later on this competition. And here comes Michael Frenchy, absolutely amazing person. Unfortunately, flushing, cartwheeling out a little bit on the entry there. He's got one more ride to go, though. He's going to want to go in and go for a spin, maybe a shove it, get himself some points on the board, which he's definitely going to need because, you know, in OC1 like this, it's already flushy enough and easy to miss the feature in a kayak or in a C1, in a thing that you don't get water in. Now you're sitting in something where you're filling with water even before that ferry across. You're filling with water before hitting the feature. Flushes could be way more consistent here, meaning that even five points could put you up on the podium. and we're just waiting for the time here to run out as we prep to move on to Landon's second ride. So Landon did not fill out his bio, so we don't have much to <laughs> say other than what we can come up with and what we can add, such as that massively stylish helmet he's rocking there, <laughs> that split with that, that, that cro uh, chrome dome. Landon dropping in for a second ride. His first ride, he got a zero, so he is going to want to up that score. Going in for a nice Pan Am to start things off into a back blunt. S but just having an unfortunate flush, he still scored that Pan Am. That is his high scoring trick. His score coming in around like 100, 110. We'll see what the judges are going to give him. But around that score, he is definitely going to be in first place. Yeah, that was a huge trick to pull off in a open boat like this huge air not huge but good air massive pan am it's one of the very difficult tricks because the boat the boats are significantly heavier and you're not strapped in as tightly as you would be in other boats so the boat can sometimes get away from your legs a little bit on those bigger tricks but pulling it around very nice locking him in in the top spot currently with 110 points next up we have seth chappelle who is sitting in second place with 61-67. He is definitely going to gonna want to beat Landon's score, and he has the skills to do it. Yeah. Seth coming in with that nice orange black fi kayak. Yeah, and it's actually interesting to see multiple different open boat designs here at this competition as Seth drops in with that original design, the Black Fly Black Fly, as we usually call it. Going for the back Pan Am, not, oh, he maintains the feature. Not sure what they will score on that, but the fact that he's stuck in the feature with a boat full of water was very impressive. Goes for the roundhouse, maybe the back roundhouse. See if he can still stay in. He is still in. He is a master of this wave. The wave keeps trying to push him out, and he keeps telling it, no, I want to be in here. I don't want to go away. Unfortunately, plugging a little bit on that stern, but it looks like they gave him some of those roundhouses, potentially maybe the spin there, putting him at 30 points. Not going to best his first ride, but definitely solid in these OC1 boats. But yeah, as I was mentioning, there are a couple designs. We see a couple different Black Fly models, including this one, the original OC1 from uh, Playboat from Blackfly, the Blackfly Blackfly. And then we'll see as some of them, like this one is the Blackfly Delta, which was the newest boat. Very difficult to get your hands on. If you see one and you like OC1, definitely uh, snipe it because you're going to want it. Next up, we have Jordan Poppenberger, multi green race, C1 champion, going in for his first trick but having an unfortunate flash. Yeah, so Jordan here choosing to go try to go absolutely huge on it right off the bat. Doesn't get the reward that he was looking for from it. Ending up with a 10 points from potentially a uh, partially scored roundhouse there, or maybe a spin. Not gonna best his first ride of 18.33. I'm interested to see 
what his tactic for his last ride is. I know one of his one one thing he loves to do is he's always go big or go home. It's either go to the top or settle with what he has and there's a chance that we might even see him go again right into that Blunt McNasty to try to take that podium spot right off the bat in his last run. Because again, if he sticks it, currently looking at the scores, that would put him in that podium spot. So the reward for doing that was huge. But the penalty for, miss for missing it could be, depending on Michael's third ride, potentially getting bumped off the podium. We'll have to wait and see as Michael drops in. This is gonna be a crucial moment for him as he catches a bit of an edge. See if he can pull it around. Unfortunately, doesn't quite make it in. This Michael the Frenchie not quite catching it, getting three unfortunate runs. Now the first run had something that looked like a spin, but because he spun off the feature, he didn't retain it in, so they didn't score it. So this will be a third zero, very unfortunate. I know it's not what he was looking for. He had been practicing for a full week here in that boat, looking for some absolutely huge tricks. We'll definitely hope to see him back again in the future. Oh, most definitely. Next up, we're gonna have Landon Miller. These guys are on their last runs. So after, after Jordan goes, we will know who the top spots are. We already know that they're all these top p three pilers are guaranteed a medal now, though. With They have points on the board. They're in the top three. It's just what colors do they choose to have on their chests here. That is going to be up to them. It's going to depend on the strategies that each of these paddlers uh, go with as they enter into their final ride. Landon just got the thumbs up from the head judge. He is currently in first place, but he wants to make sure that he gets a top spot. Yeah, here he comes in paddling hard. He is a righty paddler, as are a lot of these uh, OC1 boaters. And he's showing so much control and skill there, just not even paddling as he surfs out onto the feature. Really showing off how much control he has. His dad also an avid OC1-er. We saw him compete and throwing some beautiful, going for the Blunt McNasty. Unfortunately, not quite catching it, but that was very, very, very impressive. He also decided to go with, you know what? I know, he's like, I know Jordan's going to be going for that Blunt McNasty, so I want to be safe. I want to throw it. If I stick it, then I know that at least I'll be tied or just above to keep a little tighter competition. Now it'll be up to Jordan and Seth. Jordan's definitely, I'm sure we're going to see him go right off the bat for that Blunt McNasty to go high up on that scoreboard. Seth, we know, is capable of all, all the little tricks and then throwing that one big blunt or air blunt or that clean back Pan Am, which we know he's capable of on here. So this will be a very interesting last couple rides from these paddlers here. But yeah, as I mentioned, um, Le uh, Landon's dad, Brian Miller, also an avid OC1, or we saw him in Nottingham, and uh, it was absolutely beautiful to see the way he the way he could cartwheel and control that OC1. He showed all of, all of, the, all of us younger paddlers out there what it means to OC1 and with style. They are definitely very stylish paddlers. Next up, we have Seth Chappell for his last ride. He's currently in second place. We will see if he tries to up his score even higher. Yeah, and Seth, one another one of the uh, dads out here looking to show off for his family, trying to get himself uh, up on that podium. He's gonna go in right into Looked like he was maybe going for that pistol flip off the bat. Unfortunately, now full of water. He's going to be looking for potentially a back Pan Am, but that is very difficult. Once you miss in these boats, there's a very different strategy than traditional surface boats. Because you're full of water, like, let's say, like, if you, when you do a routine in your surface boat and you mess up on what, you might, you might not want to throw your big tricks first. You might want to go for your small tricks first to be safe, right? Meanwhile, in OC1, if you throw your small tricks first, by the time you get to your big trick, you now have, full of water, yeah, yeah. You have 40 kilograms. Imagine throwing that around in the air. So it's a totally different strategy and approach to competition. You start off with that big aerial trick to get those points, and then once the boat is full, you start toning it down, working on the small, the small mechanical tricks like the roundhouse, the spin, the shove it, trying to get some additional points up on the board. Seth, though, with this run, is going to stick with that 61-67. But who do we have next? Next up, we have Jordan Poffenberger, the person that can change the whole leaderboard. We can hear the crowd cheering for Jordan as he drops in for his last ride. 
going in for a nice blunt into a McNasty, but having an unfortunate flush. Well, we did call it. We knew he was going to go big or go home. Unfortunately, did not get the bait that he wanted. But what this does is it, I think we know our, our, our podium at the moment in our first final of today's World Cup final event. As the score is looking right now, Landon Miller is in first place with Seth Chappelle just right behind him with 61. Then Jordan Poffenberger in third place. Yeah, now with his score locking in, we know our podiums. We know our, this will be actually our third uh, medals of, we also had our squirt competition and final uh, earlier this week for this second World Cup. But currently, who will take the gold medal? It will be Landon Miller of the United States. In second spot, uh, second position, Seth Chappelle. And in third? Jordan Poffenberger. Yeah, and that will wrap up this first final, the final of Open Canoe, one of the most incredible and interesting categories in freestyle cacking. You see a very different approach to everything, as we mentioned before. But we will take a short break here now that we know our, fine, our medalists. Next up, though, we will be moving on to... Women's Open... Whoa. Women's canoe, women's OC, wim, uh, women's C1, sorry, I cannot talk today. First up, we're going to have Sophie Gifflin from U Canada, then Jack Fantastic from Great Britain, then Audie Robinson Shaw from also from Great Britain. So make sure to stay tuned. We have about 45 minutes. We have about a 15 to 17 minute break here. We will be back to you at 1.20. In the meantime, this will be Zach. <laughs> and McKinley Kate. We'll be signing off for now. <laughs>
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are in the women's C1 class. I am Hojo here in the beautiful city of Columbus, Georgia, here on the Chattahoochee River, Rush South Whitewater Park. And uh, my partner here. Zach, back again. We're going to be going through the uh, women's C1 final here. Now, there are only three competitors in this final. So as long as they all as long as they all score points, they're all guaranteed a medal. It'll just depend on what color they want. That is absolutely the case. And for those at home who've been watching all day, yes, we actually have Zach chained to the table. He uh, <laughs> he is he cannot leave. They so they do bring me food once in a while, so it's not too bad. We do we we do we don't get close enough to like let him eat it, but we bring <laughs> it so they can see it. No. We're very thankful to have Zach commentating with us. You just saw the OC1 class, if you're tuned into that. It's just kind of a fun class. This one will s should see some higher scores. We have, out of Canada, Sophie Gilfillan. She is also a junior K1 competitor. We will see her competing in a few more heats in the women's JK1 class. And then two competitors from Great Britain, Jack Fantastic and Audie Robinson Shaw. Audie, the current women's C1 world champion, she won the gold in the first World Cup upstream here in Ambush, and she is looking for another gold medal. This will be her chance to take away actually number four because she also has a gold medal in the squirt competition we had on Thursday. So we're just waiting to get going here shortly to see this women's C1. We're about one minute out, maybe even a little less as everyone's getting settled down there on the judges platform. And as we wait for this, we're also gonna bring some people in and do some interviews here by some of the people who made this competition happen. So stand by for that. We'll try to squeeze them in between rounds here. This is finals round. Zach, tell us, what do we expect for finals? So finals, as we saw in the OC1, are three rides. Best one counts. Now, those three rides are extremely important here on this slightly lower water good wave. As we have noticed, it is much more flushy than a lot of paddlers have been accustomed to. We've seen some very unfortunate flushes, and we're really hoping to not see any of that here today as all of these paddlers, these three women here, are more than capable of throwing big on this wave. That's right. Sophie Gilfillan of Canada being just a junior in this class, whereas the other two women here are technically of the senior class. We do not have a junior women's category, however. But what's nice is we have a women's category in general because just a few years ago, this was a mixed class as well. And Audie Robinson Shaw really lobbied heavily to get this a women's separate category. And now that it is one, we expect to see more women actually take over and get into this sport. So here we go from Canada, Sophie Gefillin. Yeah, she's just dropping in, choosing to switch paddle blade using that left side to get out and then switching to right to drop into the feature, which is her primary side here. Looking to set something up, going for a spin right off the bat, getting some points on the board, which are very important here. Using that surf uh, surfer's left or uh, right shoulder, going for the back blunt, managing to land it. We'll see what they give on that, depending on the landing. Looks like some score points are coming in searching her way back to that corner, looking to set up, going for the back Pan Am. Does she maintain the feature? She does. That was absolutely fantastic. The first big tricks we've seen here in the women's C1. That was absolutely beautiful. She's going to be stoked. Looking to set something up, going for potentially the roundhouse, maybe turning it into a shove it as she kept that blade in the water. She is happy. She claims that ride. Look, look, at, look at that smile. Look at that, yeah. Retaining the whole time, almost flushing. Sophie, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a competition thing. You want to win. When you don't win, you know, you feel it in your core. And at the medal ceremony, she was there, a good sportsman, but you could see on her face in the first World Cup, that she was not happy with the position she had. I think this is, she is stoked with this ride. She's gonna get a medal with this. And it might not be gold, but I suspect that, that this ride right here is what she was looking for. And if that's all she can do, then she has succeeded in doing the competition she came here to do. 
Yeah, but we know that she's gonna. She definitely wants. I've seen it in her face. She wants to put pressure on Audley for that top spot, and that is great start. Now, as we move on to Jake Fantastic. Yeah, so Jack Fantastic out of Great Britain. She is a uh, disabled paddler here, so we have to help her out on the river to get her into these heats quickly. She's a incredibly capable paddler as you're seeing her come around with those roundhouses when she's in the water you would not know that she doesn't walk very well but as a paddler she is just an extraordinary woman out here coming and representing great britain yeah she's coming in she's throwing down those uh, small moves to get some points on the board again very vital in your first one to get something on the scoreboard relieve that some of that pressure you have in your head going for those shove it. She's still looking to push that shove it around. She needs to put that stern all the way upstream and then all the way back downstream, catching a bit of an edge, but maintaining, rolling back up in the feature. She is looking for that pass, looking for her next trick. All right, there she flushes off, but really not too much time left anyhow. Uh, Jack, in this feature, I don't know that she practices waves very much. You know, they have that home pier pond there in Great Britain which basically holds, there, there are a few wave features there, so she probably doesn't get as much practice as she'd like. I'm not sure if he travels around, if she gets up to Garbrader, but there we go, 8.33 points for Jack. That's gonna slot her into second place. I do believe this next paddler, however, is gonna throw down some pretty big points. As we see, look to Audie Robinson Shaw. She is the current world champion in this, and she is sh capable of throwing a lot of points. Yeah, she's moving out in front of the feature here, looking to catch it on this beautiful sunny day here in Columbus, Georgia. Catches it, catches a bit of an edge, but manages to save. You see her let go of that T-grip to use her hand to catch herself. Beautiful back Pan Am right off the bat to start it off. Huge points on the board. There we go, she's hunting around for this, looking for a big back Pan Am the other direction. Not able to maintain. Is she going to? Is she gonna ski it? Oh, and she is over that bubble. So that's gonna give it up for her ride, but this is gonna probably put her in first place for these next two rides. All right, and I am joined here by Pace Halter. Pace, uh, who do you represent here at this competition? Yeah, good uh, afternoon. I am the chair of Uptown Columbus. Very good, and Uptown Columbus, of course, being the main organizer for this, for the home organizing committee. Yeah, that's right. We run uh, all the civic events that are in and around the Uptown area, from concerts to, to whitewater events like this. How many events do you guys put on a year, just in general, not counting you know, their size? You're not worried about size. Uh, total is probably close to 50 or 60 uh, between concerts, uh, water events like this, and, and all sorts of stuff that goes on around holidays, et cetera. Awesome, that is great. And so you guys are bringing the World Cup here. You're gonna go ahead and bring the World Championships next year. Are you guys pretty excited about that? Yeah, super excited. This has been a great turnout this year. We're really excited to see what uh, next year will bring. Hopefully a lot more athletes and uh, you know get to enjoy the water. So right now we're up here at the stream booth. You're watching these competitions. What do you think so far of, of what you've seen in these World Cups? Yeah, it's unbelievable. The, the talent is absolutely amazing. Uh, we were excited when we got to host and uh, we're excited about what, what we might get to see and that have been absolutely blown away by the level of talent that we've seen. That is great. Now, uh, how did Uptown Columbus come about this? Like, did you approach them? Did somebody come to you? How, how did this all sort of manifest in the beginning? Yeah, long story, I'll try to cliff note. The, the Whitewater uh, took almost 10 years to get rolling. Uh, once we got it reopened and uh, turned into what you see today, we really got rolling on trying to bring major events uh, we reached out to ICF, started this conversation uh, now probably two years ago, and uh, obviously we're seeing the culmination of that now. That is amazing. A, a multi-year process for this, just extraordinary. So we're going to go back into these women's rounds. We're going to talk a little more. If you want to stick around uh, after this next set of runs, I'd like to ask you a few more questions. Yeah, be okay? happy to. Very good. So right Absolutely. now we're talking to Pace Halter from Uptown Columbus, but next we're going to bring you right back into the action here in the women's C1 category. All right, I am back here, and as we have, we're just waiting for the thumbs up for uh, Sophie Gilfillan as Audley's first ride came in at a 2.46, which puts her into the first place position at the moment. But we have Sophie here who's not too far behind. She's looking to put some pressure on the British paddler here as we move into the second of three rides. We are just waiting for the thumbs up. Now, as there are only three paddlers, they are running some ghost 
riders. Basically what that means is not the comic, but you get extra space in between. So they'll run the time for the paddlers that aren't there because otherwise it's a little too fast for some of these paddlers. It adds too much, pr it basically doesn't give them all the rest they need. And here we have, she's coming into the feature again, choosing to switch to that left blade to be able to get out a little easier, switching back up and about to drop in. Yeah, you know, that is a, a thing about the canoe paddles is you only have one blade, but you are absolutely welcome to switch sides. There's nothing saying you have to leave on one side, but as Zach is probably going to attest, there's one side you are definitely stronger on. She goes for that back blunt around. Now it looks like she's trying to throw maybe something a little harder a little earlier, wasn't it? Yes, definitely. She's uh, She was looking to put on those big tricks. We saw her very happy with that first ride, putting her comfortably right now in the second place. She's definitely now, knowing that Audley's score is above her, she's going to be looking to put it best it even more. She's going to be going right into those big tricks, going for the high risk and potentially extremely high reward if she lands them. Yeah. Yes, and, and today, as we've seen, even in the men's category, the highest level, we had flushes with zeros straight out of the gate, and these are individuals who can throw huge points. So the flushy feature, the nature of this competition in general, it's just how this goes. All right, and the r second ride locking in at 10. We are just getting ready for our next paddler here, Jack Fantastic. Yeah, Jack out of Great Britain. Now, she not only should she do freestyle, she is a creaker as well. I saw her last year come compete at the Utz Trophy in Austria, and that is no small bit of water. That is a tough race to compete in as she comes into this very flushy corner. Looking around now, she's just going to spin into that shove it, so that should be a five points on the board right there. And if you look on your scores, you can see the live scores coming up. And they even gave her maybe a little air on that shove it, which is nice. She went, went ahead and got that shove it one more time and then just cleans right off the wave. This matches her score. Now this could be, this might very well be one of the only moves she can do and can do reliably. And that's completely acceptable because anyone who is paddling and getting into the sport will tell you that wave is, is very uh, uh, intimidating. And they call it the good wave. It's, uh, it's good and intimidating. Let me tell you, I, I paddled through there a couple times, and it can just smack you down. And so to have control to produce the moves you want to produce, that's a level of skill that a lot of people would love to get, and these paddlers obviously have. They're here in finals. They've had to put down points before. So Jack, up in her score a little bit, 10 points. So they gave her uh, maybe two shove or I'm not sure where the extra points came from as we see a drone there in the shot. That's kind of interesting. Sneak we, into the camera we, shot just we, a little bit. We there. might want to tell people who are flying the drone that they're in our camera shots. So, but that's okay. Now, up text, Audie Robinson Shaw of Great Britain. She is the favorite here. She already has the gold in the first World Cup. What can she give us now? As she drops into that shoulder, almost flushing, but managing to uh, keep herself in, she's going to be looking to up her score, put herself even more securely in that first place position, looking for what I know is going to be an attempt at a big back Pan Am. Not quite getting the pop, using her hand to save that. That was a very good reflexes on her part there. Yeah, she's definitely, th she, with, when you have two paddle blades, you can throw your weight left and right. With that right paddle blade or only one paddle blade, you know, you, you tend to throw that arm out off the paddle blade to establish that balance. Not the ride she wanted. Uh, she's still in a commanding lead, but she still has left the door open for Sophie Gilfill. And if Sophie can throw a 211, I guarantee you she can throw a 250. And I suspect right now Sophie is thinking about that as we come to the bottom of this. We have one more ride left. And again, I'm going to be joined by Mr. Pace Halter. So Pace, uh, part of Uptown Columbus, but also we couldn't do this event without some of our sponsors. And you represent one of those sponsors. I do. I'm fortunate enough to work for the WC Bradley Company. We're a Columbus-based company, 137 years old, privately held, uh, diversified holding company. 137 years old. Indeed. That's, that's pretty extraordinary. And uh, how did they start out? What was the first thing you guys made? Yeah, so our, our uh, oldest uh, consumer products division is Charbroil Grills, so one of the world's largest manufacturers of gas and charcoal grills. Uh, we also own uh, the Tiki brand, Backyard Torch, and String Lights, and Outdoor Pits. And then uh, we own an, an apparel and a pack company called Badlands. Uh, I run our real estate division, which is predominantly based here in Columbus. Um, part of what uh, we own includes the powerhouse where we are right now. Oh, so we're uh, WC Bradley actually uh, holds this property in their holdings. We do indeed. Oh, that's very nice. Well, this is a beautiful location. We uh, so if th this is really important then. Um, 
We're up here on this deck. It's gorgeous, beautiful VIP. It does take me about seven days to walk around to the bottom. <laughs> so uh, I formally request a zip line uh, to be put in next year so we can just zip on down there straight down three seconds. Yeah, well, we, yeah, we've got the zip line already here going across the river, one of the only uh, state to state zip lines in the country. But uh, getting one from here down to the competition, we'll see if we can put that in for next year. Yeah, that's uh, no. You don't actually have to do that. It's <laughs> it's it has been delightful. But it is it, it it's interesting if you come here to the powerhouse. It, it's situated weird with the bottom of the river, but I mean it wasn't designed as a whitewater park. It was designed as a, as a power generation station. And as we know, we've learned that there there have been multiple dams on this for the textiles mill. Big history of manufacturing and uh, your company, of course, part of that. Right. Yeah. So it's uh, very much the history of Columbus and why it's based where it is is. Uh, we sit on where the plates shift from the coastal plains to the uh, Piedmont region. You go from a sand bottom to a rock bottom on the river, and the boats literally couldn't come further north on the river, so they stopped here, and uh, this is where we find Columbus. All right. Well, I'm going to have to take this mic away. We're going to call this last ride. Thank you so much, Hank, for joining or Pace for joining us. Absolutely. My pleasure. All right, and here we go. Sophie Gilfillan uh, taking her last and final ride. Can she get 250 points? Zach, take it away. All right, here, she's catching the feature. Unfortunate flush on that. That was, I know she was looking to go absolutely huge on oh. that run, but that is the that is the joys of this good wave here. It is a terrifying feature when this type of stuff happens, but you know what? We saw the smile she had after her first run. We know she was extremely happy, and I'm, I believe she's gonna be coming into this, uh, this, uh, this podium potentially with a huge smile. Well, I suspect that's right now. I don't wonder that maybe she saw those scores and went, I have a chance. So it might be a bittersweet mixed feeling of I could have maybe done it, but as you say, her first ride, she was so excited, and we haven't seen that out of first rides. We have not seen people come typically, with the exception of maybe Dane Jackson, Nick Troutman, we have not seen any of the other paddlers really come and throw down a massive first ride like she did. She came here to compete, and she still has another shot at a higher medal. She's currently sitting in the silver spot. I suspect that Jack Fantastic will not be able to threaten that too much as we see her come on the water, but she still has a chance. And uh, Sophie Gilfillan will come into the junior category looking for another medal for Canada. But right now, up from Great Britain, Jack Fantastic. Yeah, dropping the wave, switching just before catching to make a little bit of a plug, trying to save it with a loop, but not quite getting it around. Some unfortunate third runs here as we get into the end of our women's C1. We've got one other paddler left to go, though, and I believe this is going to be Audley's victory lap. That is correct. So uh, if, if, if you haven't watched this too much at home, when you are guaranteed the gold medal and your next or last ride does not change the standings, we just call it a victory lap, and it gives some paddlers uh, the opportunity to just go out and have a little fun if they want to maybe entertain the crowd. Um, it has been the habit of Audie Robinson Shaw to go down and actually try to throw a bigger ride. She is a, a, a high-performance athlete who wants to perform in every round. So for her, the idea of a throwaway ride uh, is just doesn't enter her lexicon. And it's great to see because we get to see this individual show us exactly what kind of skills she's gotten. So hopefully, what we hope when she goes to do these victory rides is that maybe there's a little stress that's off of her and she can actually throw stuff even bigger where she would maybe be a little more conservative. So it's up to the paddler. This is your gold medalist, Audie Robinson Shaw from Great Britain. She is gonna take the feature here momentarily. Yeah, and something I'm, I love to see about this is this is just the beginning for this category. Category World Championships earlier in June, this June in Nottingham, was the first time we saw it officially recognized by the ICF, and now we're seeing it for the second time, and the level of skill that has been growing in this category is absolutely incredible in the last year, and I'm very excited to see what the future of it holds. But here we see Audley, she is dropping in, going for a victory lap. Let's see what she's got for us. Maybe going into potentially some huge tricks right off the bat. Looking for potentially a blunt. Maybe she's gonna go and try try one of those tricks that we haven't seen her go for yet. A huge, absolutely massive back Pan Am for the crowd here in Columbus. It'd be interesting to see if she tries an air screw. And we know she's not, because she's flush. But that was just extraordinary. That move right there. Uh, you know, she didn't have to do too much more to have even bounced that up to the higher. But there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the women's C1 final. Taking the gold medal 
from Great Britain, Audie Robinson Shaw with a nice performance, sneaking up, biting her on the heels there though is the junior Sophie Gilfillan. So we expect to see great things out of her in the World Championships here next year. And then third place from Great Britain, Jack Fantastic coming all the way over the pond to compete with these women here in the World Cup number two. Yeah, and next up after this, this is this has been our second final of today, our fourth final of the second World Cup here in Columbus, Georgia. Up next, we will see our men's C1 final. In that final, we will have in run order Tom Dolly of France, Jordan Poffenbigger of the United States, who's already taken a bronze medal here in OC1, Landon Miller of the United States, also just coming off the back of a gold in OC1. Seth Chappelle of the United States, another medalist from our OC1 category with a silver, and Dane Jackson. We'll be back with you guys in just under 20 minutes here. In the meantime, have yourself a drink, and we'll see you later.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get underway for this men's canoe final here. I am joined by Rick McLaughlin. We're going to introduce him before we get on to this and ask him some questions as well as we go through. Rick, welcome. Uh, what company do you represent here? Thanks. Uh, I'm with McLaughlin Mc 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 Whitewater Design Group. Uh, we're a part of a company called Merrick. Yeah, that's right. And if I'm not mistaken, you had a big hand in actually creating what we call Wave Shaper Island. We did. Actually, uh, we uh, we pretty much revamped the entire 2.1 mile stretch of this river. That's amazing. 2.1 miles, beautiful white water here. So we're going to watch this men's C1 final. Again, we're going to start handing out more medals. It's all medals today. And we're going to come back with Rick here in a little bit and talk to him about the, the Whitewater Park, the history of that. So uh, stick around, Rick, and, and we'll have you here in a moment. Will do. All right, here we go. Men's C1, I am Hojo, joined by Zach. Very good. Zach Zwanenberg of the Canadian team. He is helping commentate here today. Zach, you know quite a bit about this, don't you? If I'm not mistaken, you are a seaboat sea boat paddler. Yes, uh, C1 and OC1 are my two primary. I do, do, I do a lot of kayaking as well, but I do find there's some very unique features about sea boating that make it that much more epic. And right now we have Mr. Tom Dole of France taking the water here. He is our first paddler. He has a former C1 champion 2019, so he can take this gold. He has all the skill. Coming around with that roundhouse to the right, not getting that full back surf. They were saying they're not going to award that if they don't go into a full back surf. And unfortunately, he's going to pop off of the wave. Tom DeLay. I honestly think Tom is under a lot of stress. He's helping coach these juniors that are doing pretty darn well. Um, he used to live here. He's coming back, helping his family do some family things here. Nothing bad, just a lot of work. He's under a lot of work. And so hopefully Tom can come back and throw down some more rides. The, the, these aren't the normal rides we're used to with this guy. And uh, so that'll be up a zero for him for the first one. But now we're going to move into Jordan Poffenberger. Jordan just securing a bronze medal in the OC class. Yeah, and just here with uh, on Tom's run, we saw one of the things that can happen in uh, C1 is you only have one blade. So what happened here is he was on his offside, which means that his uh, paddle is down, his blade is downstream, uh, is upstream in the trough. So when you fall over, you're just, you have to rely on your hand. You don't have an extra blade there to reach. So it adds an extra dynamic, an extra level of difficulty to these features, especially a rough one like this, as we see Jordan Poppenbigger pushing himself out onto the out into the feature, having a bit of a hard time there, but managing to correct it. He's a very talented, very experienced sea boater. That's right. This guy has multiple Green Race championships in sea boat. If you can paddle Green Race in a sea boat, you can come out here and do an air screw like it's nobody's business. Yeah, he's been talking about that air screw for a little bit, and we saw it right there, then pushing it into a beautiful, beautiful aerial blunt. Looking potentially for a clean blunt that other direction, the catching of a bit of an edge. He's, there's that edge one more time. He's still looking for that amazing Pan Am. He is truly showing us what you can do with a single blade. That's right. Now this guy took silver, or gold medal in both C and OC in 2013 Worlds in Nantahala, just north of us at the NOC, so he can definitely win a medal. He goes for a helix in C1. A Another air screw the other direction in C1. That is a phenomenal ride, a phenomenal show of skill. People are cheering. He's like, meh. He knows. He knows that was a pretty big ride. I don't know if they're going to award him that, that helix. It's got to be completely aerial for uh, a certain amount of rotation. We'll see this in the in the replay. I wasn't watching the score, but that air screw right there, I think they're going to maybe put a donkey flip on that one, but still plenty of points. Sitting 445 as he comes around. Huge Pan Am there, definitely getting that boat up and over 90 degrees, blunting right out of it. Back blunt's worth a little more than front blunts as he's cleaning that one up, but catches the edge, does not end in that back surf. And let's see, I think this is the helix attempt. Let's take a look. So that was attempt number one. I Hopefully they show the, the one where he did pull it around. Something interesting, so when it comes to a, a single blade, because you don't have that other blade to start the spin, something interesting he did here is he actually started from reverse and spun his way before initiating. So right here you'll see, uh, maybe we'll see it right here, yeah. Starts in reverse, starts that spin, gets that momentum to kick it around to get finish that full 
hundred three hundred and sixty degree rotation. And I suspect a little more to flip turn on that four hundred and five points instead of a helix so he can still get partial points. That's a great score for him to lay down straight out of the gate. We're gonna move now into Landon Miller. Landon coming in and I believe he took silver in the last round in OC competition. Landon now gonna come out here in Seaboat. Yep, Landon took gold, so he's hunting his second gold today. As he, from the US, coming down here, he was a junior competitor in Worlds. This guy can throw really big moves. I suspect we'll see maybe a blunt nasty out of him. Going right into a blunt to the left, putting air into the boat. Going back in for the Pan Am, trying to get blunt and the Pan Am both. Beautiful, he said, I didn't get that Pan Am, I'm gonna go in and get it again. High risk, but high reward as he back Pan Am's out of that, coming on the feature, just face surfing into that, but pulling right out as he's putting plenty of points on the board, looking for maybe clean on something like that. There's that back blunt to the left, back blunt to the right, I suspect roundhouse on that one, drawing, going in again, he suspected that as well. He can get both a blunt and a roundhouse and a Pan Am. There's the blunt McNasty. We'll see what the points go. That's a 220 point move as he's coming up, looking for all of these moves, flushing out on the buzzer, 390 points showing. This does threaten the 405 point mark. We're gonna have to wait to see what happens. Yeah, it was incredible watching. We'll hopefully see it here on the replay as he pulled around that after going for the Blunt McNasty, maybe a little bit of a roundhouse there, but then pulling that loop around out of the McNasty. So, so much power shown by Landon Miller here. Well, it's pretty crazy. The, uh, the ability to come out here and do the K-Class, the C-Class. Jordan Poffenberger is a very accomplished uh, kayaker as well. However, Landon Miller... Tom Dolay and Dane Jackson are all very much consummate both. They do both all the time. Whereas in this class, Jordan Poffenberger and uh, Seth Chappelle pretty much just specialize in sea boat for, for big competitions. That doesn't stop them from kayaking, but looking like this is gonna stabilize right at 390. I suspect they're talking about that air screw if he really did get it. And right there, if that loop came down straight, if it's really a blunt McNasty, there's that air screw right there. Was he aerial enough for it, or was it a donkey flip? Landon just throwing stuff all the way to the end, catching that edge right at the end. I think it was time had expired or was expired right as he bubbled up. Yeah, so we're still seeing the score locking in at a 390 points. That'll put him in second place at the moment with his first run. Not far behind Jordan Poffenberger, though. Next up in this heat, we will have Seth Chappelle. We're waiting for the thumbs up from the judges before he drops in for his first ride. As we mentioned, Seth is an extremely, extremely experienced sea boater. He is primarily a sea boater, has tons of world's experience, including a previous, um, a previous silver at the last Wave Worlds on the Garburator Wave on the Ottawa River in Canada. Fourth place in 2017, 13, and 11 C1 Worlds as well. Coming in straight away with that blunt and back blunt. That was a beautiful start to his first ride, going for the blunt the other way, getting nice and aerial on that bow. Looking to set up, he is a powerhouse of a C1-er. All, all the tricks he does are textbook. He is calculated. There goes that Pan Am, front Pan Am, the back Pan Am, going for the Pan Am the other direction. This is absolutely phenomenal ride. Already taking over first place with his points, with one paddle yet to go. Yeah, he's lining up, potentially looking for a McNasty here. Pistol flip, potentially. Let's see what he's got for us here as he throws. Doesn't quite get the bow down on it. He's got three seconds left. Catches a bit of an edge. One second left. What can he throw for us? Attempts the McNasty. Does pull it around, but looks like it was just behind the buzzer on that. Yeah, and that loop really probably wouldn't count anyhow. Uh, still, the fact that he was able to try one with such short amount of time after having to do a rescue cartwheel into that just shows Seth's potential as he pops around. We'll watch this replay, and this will bring up Dane Jackson. I believe Dane got the gold medal in, women's, in, the, in the C1 earlier uh, in World Cup number one. So we'll see what he does here. Seth Chappelle, however, definitely threatening the gold medal spot. And we still have one paddle yet in this round. Three rides, one ride counts in this men's C1 final. All right, we still we're still watching Seth here as he went to try to pull around that McNasty. 
a very, very challenging trick to do on a dynamic feature such as Good Wave here in Columbus. But he's happy with this, already putting himself into first position with this. We're still waiting on the score to lock, but I believe it's going to sit fairly high. He's going to be sitting comfortably there, but we'll have to see what our next paddler, Dane Jackson, has to say about that. That's right. Look at that. 600 points. Right now, with 600 points, he is actually threatening scores that the men's through in their semifinal round. The uh, 600 points just in the men's semifinal round would have put him in ninth place <laughs> out of 10. And so right there, this, this this score alone with one paddle blade shows you that these guys can throw just as big of moves as the regular kayaks. Yeah, and they're definitely seeing it. It's a very, very interesting, more cal very calculated approach to, that Seth takes to his rides. Instead of going for the lesser known C1 tricks, such as the air screws, it locks in at 663. So yeah, his technique of going for all of the, fr going left blunt, right blunt, left Pan Am, right Pan Am, left back Pan Am, left uh, right back Pan Am, those calculated tricks back to back really have rewarded him and now we have Dane Jackson. Yeah, Dane coming out here. He can throw the same, obviously even bigger. He is quite capable uh, in Boater. We already know that. So what's he going to give us now? Going right in for a huge Pan Am, sort of falling on his face there a little bit. Backing it up into a back blunt, putting air under the boat on both of those. A real good start to this ride. Huge clean blunt to the right. Maybe clean. We'll see what the judges give. You know, they have to really watch that paddle blade. For me, I almost miss it every time, but that's how it goes as he's coming into a huge Pan Am there, backing it up, really finding a nice retentive spot on that wave. Oh, just as I say it, I jinx him off the wave. That is my fault, ladies and gentlemen. But Dane throwing down uh, almost 400 points now, 403, 413. He's going to take over second place with this in these first rides. We still have two more rounds, two more rides to go by these paddlers. Yeah, and whether kneeling or sitting, Dane is an extremely proficient paddler on almost any feature. All right, we're going to take it over now and uh, throw a little bit more interview in as we watch Dane's ride settle here. All right, it settles there. We have just a few seconds here. We're going to run this in. But uh, you had just relayed a story to me about the first paddler to come out here and paddle on this feature after you guys did the wave shaper. Yeah, Jordan. Uh, uh, Jordan uh, interned with us a number of years ago, and uh, he was one of the first boaters out here to, uh, to help us uh, evaluate how we did. Oh, that's awesome. So <laughs> we're not going to get much time between these, but we'll bring you back here in a bit as we look for Tom Dole. We need a Tom dropping in for his second ride. Gives a bit of a wave to the crowd. That was some good style. Oh, beautiful, clean back Pan Am. And they're going to score that. It looks like they're giving him some points, even though he flushed. We'll see. It's one of those things where they call it, and unfortunately, hopefully they don't take this off. It's... <laughs> It's, live scoring has this, and they do. They take it right off. Live scoring is such that they, uh, the, the judges say it. By the time the scribe puts it on, the judges are like, nope, nope, take that all off again. Having been in the scoring world for quite some time, it is a challenge for these judges and scribes to sort of keep all together. And uh, that is just going to count as a flush for Tom as his time expires. He still has one more shot. He's a former world champion. He can absolutely come in and take a medal here. So we are uh, looking for Tom's third ride as he paddles down. And one thing about this, they have to paddle all the way around the island, get out of their boats, walk back up, walk all, <laughs> get back in their boats. It's uh, it's quite the uh, quite the walk. All right, Jordan Poppenberger coming out here and interning with McLaughlin, helping to set this wave. And here he comes for his ride. All right dropping in for his second ride. Already a solid score, looking to best it with starting off with a beautiful air screw. Looking for a blunt potentially to the right, not quite getting it, blunt to the left, possibly clean. We'll see how high that paddle went. Clean blunt to the left. That was the first trick. Going into the backstab to the right. Going for that clean Pan Am. Now the thing with C1 is because you don't have a paddle blade on one side, ooh, initiating into a beautiful helix. We'll see if that was enough air to score. But yeah, like I was saying, the thing with these uh, single blades is if you throw on your offside, the, you can actually much easier score some clean bonuses. Looking for the uh, McNasty, not quite pulling the bow around uh, properly, going potentially for another back Pan Am attempt. Still, this is a phenomenal ride, sitting over 600 already. He's going to be stoked with that. Yeah, this is going to put him over Dane Jackson's ride. Uh, for sure, it, whether it threatens Seth at 663 remains to be seen. 
as this live scoring settles out. But yeah, as you say, the, the, the paddle blade missing on one side can definitely assist in that, in that clean because you can't take that paddle stroke. However, the clean also counts half the time for the paddle stroke at the end for, for recovery and for stability. And that's where the magic is. These paddlers who can put clean down just making it look easy, uh, it is not. Yeah, and something you'll actually see a lot in the C-Class is some paddlers do opt to switch side with their blade in their runs. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages to that, which is why you'll see some people such as um, uh, Jordan here who prefers to go clean on that offside go for those bonuses. It is a lot more difficult, but if you n get it, you can score some higher points. All right, 643 settles. It does increase his score, keeps him in second, or it should increase his score, puts him over Dane Jackson. And so now we're going to have to see next up if Landon Miller, currently sitting in fourth, can do anything about getting himself back up into the medals. And we know he can. He is a phenomenal young sea paddler. I believe he is still a junior in this category, which is absolutely incredible to see him out there throwing as big and sometimes bigger than the others. All right, Landon coming here and taking the feature. He's going to pop in now for a beautiful Pan Am with air. They can get the air bonus on these. Going in again, thinking maybe I got just got the blunt. I'm not sure if they would give you the blunt if you do two Pan Ams in a row. Uh, that's I don't believe they, they do. There's the blunt. So he did two Pan Ams, making sure he gets that back blunt. And, uh, you know, it's just absolutely going over vertical on these back Pan Ams. Again, going to that same size, I wonder if he's trying to set up for the Pan Am McNasty. This looks like by him doing the same side to the left, he is maybe trying to test out the waters to throw that loop on the end as he backs out of that one. Riding up on the bubble, can he maintain it? He cannot. Oh, but Landon Miller, 398 points. It's going to increase his score a little bit. Can he reach that 416 as the judges fix this score up? Yeah, only time will tell as his third and final ride will be coming up in just a bit. But coming up next is Seth, the current leader at the moment. We'll see if he can best his current score. That's right, Seth, the father out of Frederick, Maryland at this time. He is from a family of paddlers. His brother paddles. He paddles. I don't know if he's got any other siblings. I paddle with his brother from time to time in Colorado. And they're just fun. They're fun people. They're enjoyable to paddle with. They get out. They enjoy the water. They celebrate the river. He was the OC World Cup champion in the 2012 World Cup as well. So no stranger to cup championships. Still looking for Landon's score to settle. It looks like he's going to improve by maybe about eight points. And he does uh, does not change his position. However, he has one more ride as stated. But now we're going to look for Seth Chappelle. Yeah, Seth's first ride already keeping him up in the top spot. He's wanting to best that. He wants to make sure that he is harder to catch than he already is. Let's see what he does as he comes in. Here is another righty paddler. Now, the thing is, it can be very difficult to get out. You see, as he has to cross bow to get out to the middle of the current, which is why we saw Sophie in the women's category switch side to try to conserve a bit of energy. But Seth choosing to stay on his onside, going for a beautiful left blunt to start it off, looking to set something up in that foam pile, spinning it around into a beautiful flashback, which is a clean backstab, unfortunately flushing off the back on that ride, but again, he's got such a good first ride, and he's still got his third to come that he can wave this one off quite comfortably. That's right. Now, up next, Dane Jackson can take this away from him. These, all these paddlers just really d putting on good scores. Tom's the only one who has yet to put down a score. He will come back for his third ride. I suspect he's down there doing a little meditation as I look into the eddy. I see Dane ready. Dane, of course, always paddling that pink kayak. He's made that sort of his signature boat. We have, uh, we have another paddler from France uh, named Eric DeGill, always has a pink helmet. So it's, it's kind of nice to see the character folks bring. You had Gav Barker earlier in like all coordinated orange, so like a, what, what I call like a uh, rising sun print. But Dane always paddling this pink boat with that Red Bull helmet. He's, he's a, uh, an icon here on the river, fun to watch. Let's see if he can actually come and knock Seth off the top. Maybe he can knock uh, Jordan down a peg. He is got one more right after this still as he does that giant over vertical Pan Am right into the blunt with air, off into the blunt with air on the other side. Dane is now setting down a solid ride. Yeah, he's spinning around. He was looking for a pass backwards, potentially for a back Pan Am, which he looks like he's about to try right there. 
beautiful back pin. I'm unfortunately flipping up and over the feature. I believe that is th that is one of the tricks he flushed on on the first one. We'll see if maybe he switches up his strategy going into his third ride to attempt to best Jordan and Seth on this current leaderboard. That's right. You know, we see Dane oftentimes doing blunt McNasties, and he can absolutely do that. <laughs> I. That was massive. I, that is so hard to do, and yet it, it's it is a it is a bit comical to sort of see Dane fall over with that paddle blade on the outside. Normally they throw I think they throw that paddle blade down to sort of stabilize him, but he is so darn good that it just makes it look extraordinary because it is extraordinary. Uh, <laughs> that's going to bring us around with Dane's ride. 363 is not going to do anything for his score. Uh, we are now looking for an interview here with Mr. McLaughlin. So, if I'm not mistaken, you guys uh, learned about this well back in the 1996 Olympics, this Whitewater Park project. Yeah, we, uh, as we were designing the, the ECOE, uh, we kind of stopped by here, and, and uh, they were interested in what they could do with their, with their river. Uh, awesome, and so that was well back, 95, 96. And when did you guys first start working on this project? Well, we, we actually first uh, did our first kind of uh, concept design back in about 2000. Okay. And uh, then it, uh, they had to raise funds and kind of get the, the idea passed to everybody and started construction probably around 2011-12. So qu quite a while, but uh, well worth it given what the park is. We're going to come back to Tom Dole of France. All right, this is it for Tom. This is his last ride. He's going to put some points down. He can come take a medal. Let's get Tom some love there from home. He can feel you guys watching the TV, watching the live stream there on YouTube. Yeah, and his nickname is Pitsy Tom, Small Tom, but it's a very deceiving name as he can throw absolutely massive out here on this feature. Looking to set something up here, having a little bit of a tough time on that offside edge. He's going to shake that off. He's looking to get one pass there, going for a beautiful Pan Am to the left. Oh no. Catching up advantage, but does he manage to roll back up? Unfortunately not. He falls off oh, the back of the feature. That is too bad. And uh, Tom did put what his uh, nickname is, and that's absolutely wrong. So we call him the Flying Frenchman, and he can't change that. That's the nickname we've given him. We get to choose these things. It's and the joys of being the announcers. That's right, Tom. You know, he's been around the scene for a while. He, he still looks like a junior, by the way. He is a very powerful paddler. Uh, he was in the Utz race just a few weeks ago, a week and a half ago now, putting down really big, actually not even that, but a week and a day ago, uh, competing over there. And here we look now, Mr. Jordan Poffenberger. Now, right now, Jordan Poffenberger sitting in second place. He is still vulnerable because his other paddlers can knock him off. As he, oh, subs out, rolls back up. Oh, poor Jordan. He's like, what was that? What did I do? How could I have done that? Always a smiley guy. That is how the cookie crumbles for Jordan. Now he is he's in second place. Landon Miller and Dane Jackson can both knock him completely off the podium. Yeah, at this point, Seth is guaranteed a medal regardless of what happens here. But Jordan is potentially on that bubble. He was so close. He was chasing Th Seth's score so closely with a, almost exactly, exactly a 20-point difference from his, Seth's top ride. Still a great performance out here by Jordan. Now we are going to move down to Landon Miller as Landon attempts to make his way onto that podium. That's right. So Landon Miller coming to us uh, as a a team member in this last world championships in both sea boat and OC boat. This guy actually in Nottingham on practice rides and in his competition would come onto that hole in an OC and throw an entry McNasty. Just extraordinary. His dad, Brian, also is a canoe boat paddler as well. It's a whole family affair. So we're going to watch Landon now. He is sponsored by Haichu, I might want to add. Up on the bubble, up on the bubble. Oh, Landon cannot make it. So what this means now is that Jordan Poffenberger, Dane Jackson, and Seth Chappelle are your medalists because the only thing that can happen now is Dane come up and uh, bump Seth down. Although Seth can pull his score higher, Seth really can't do anything more than increase his score. He's in the gold medal spot. He can't upset the balance any more than he can just extend his lead. 
Yeah, he's gonna be. He's already in a fairly comfortable position, but he want he knows that Dane is capable of hitting those scores as well. He wants to bump his lead even more to really push Dane to the limit. Make sure that he is guaranteed that gold medal. We will have to see what he has in store for us here on his last ride of this C1 final. That is right. So Seth Chappelle getting queued up there. Uh, I can almost see him in the eddy. Again, they get out from their rides. They walk all the way, or they paddle all the way to the tip of the island, get out sort of around the corner, have to walk back across the rocks, put in on the rocks there. Now these are, I believe, with the exception of Jordan's boat, these are all plastic boats. So they can just slide it on the rock. We do have this cool little carpeted deck for the carbon boats because those carbon boats really don't like to slide on rocks very well. Yeah, a really common thing we do when we go out on the river is you'll see carbon boat paddlers. They'll show up to the feature. They pull out some form of like carpet from the back of their boat to put it on the rocks. But here he comes, Seth Chappelle, the current leader. Can he maintain it? Can he best his score? Will we have our gold medalist here? We will have to find out. All right, here we go. Seth Chappelle coming all the way. There's this little curler at the top. You'll see him fold right over that. And they come out into the middle of this feature. And there is Seth lining it up. He's going to take silver or gold. What's it going to be as he comes in for nice front blunt, nice back blunt, another front blunt, trying to back blunt around, fails on that one. He's going to line it up again on this back pass. And there it is, maybe even a Pan Am coming right over the top as he lines it up. Throws in for that back Pan Am again. Now into a back blunt to the left. Up oh, there's his flush. So that's it for Seth. His 663 is going to stand. And now it's down to the wire for Dane Jackson, sitting in bronze medal position. This is a gentleman who has many times upset from the back, although generally speaking, a lot of his long history has been go to the top, stay at the top. So he's going to have to come out and throw bigger than a 663. Yeah, but what a strong showing from Seth Chappelle. He's got his whole family cheering him on from the shores today here uh, in Columbus, Georgia. And look, we're watching that replay, that beautiful back Pan Am, something he's been doing consistently this whole run, already upping his position from the World Cup won earlier this week, so he's going to be stoked. But let's see, can Dane take the top spot? Can he take second? We will have to see here as he drops into the feature for his final ride. Unfortunately, flushes off the back of the oh feature. No. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is your men's C1 final. Everyone up here, there, everyone is just sort of beside themselves. And that's how it goes. And uh, oh, there's Landon poaching in a ride right at the end. He's like, I'm going to go get back on that wave. TV's showing me. But right now, I'm going to switch back over. So your medalist, Seth, Jordan, and Dane, Landon taking fourth and Tom of France taking fifth place, all of them with points on the board for your men's C1. So we talked about, we started this project, it's now come to completion. Uh, how many points on the river have you actually worked on? Uh, uh, just Wave Shaper, or have you worked up and down the river in a lot of sp places? Uh, that's a good question. There's probably about 25 or 30 different features that we built in the river. 20, 25 or 30? Yeah. Oh my goodness, and uh, that, that spans in this rush out, sort of this, this uh, two mile section of water, 2.1 2 or whatever? Yep. I gotcha. And it, a lot of people ask, why would we do that in a natural river, right? So, so why didn't you just take out the dams and let them free flow? And the, and the short answer is just that uh, when they built these gorgeous masonry dams, they used the riverbed as a quarry. So, uh, uh, we, we knew from kind of detailed sonar and things like that that the, r the riverbed had been highly disturbed uh, over the, the centuries and that uh, it needed a little help. Yeah, that's, that's, that's incredible. And the dams themselves, sometimes they can be what we call drowning machines. Were any of them uh, r severe in that level or were they just ecologically not the best thing to have? Uh, these were big enough so they weren't really low head dams they, and, and didn't really uh, have people going over the top of them normally so they weren't that kind of a hazard but they weren't really great for the river uh, this is 95% uh, of, of the falls line along the east coast where the kind of the east coast dropped off and exposed these rapids ha has been impounded and so this habitat hold on real quick impounded sure. what, what do you mean by uh, that term uh, dammed up dammed up okay yeah. so when they came here they wanted hydropower or or hydromechanical power, and they dammed them up and built mills and, and put them to their best use back then. Uh, and they did that all along the East Coast. But uh, uh, 
but uh, the mills had left uh, when we were coming here. They were about closed up, and uh, they had these dams that they liked, and the, the impoundments and or the pools behind the dams, but uh, they'd spent a lot of money on the uh, walkways and so forth, but there really weren't very many people around. So they said, what can we do here? So, so fixing up the riverbed, that's great. Now, I, I know that uh, a lot of different civic projects and restoration projects, you, you can win awards as awards. Have, have you won any awards for this or other projects uh, that, that the McLaughlin Group has done? Yes, uh, this project won the, the American Society of Civil Engineers uh, Award back, back in the day. Um, and uh, and other projects have as well. Uh, whenever you take a kind of a highly disturbed river or, or river that's not functioning well, well, and turn it into a real amenity, it's a big deal. That's wonderful. And are you guys uh, working anything else in this river, or is the project kind of at a completion, or are you doing other projects here uh, in the Chattahoochee here in the Columbus, Georgia area? No. Uh, uh, well, the bulk of this project, of course, is completed. Um, right now, river surfing is a real big deal. And uh, it was coming out kind of right as we were completing this project. And so the project sponsors are kind of looking at what can we do to for river surfing spots, kind of nice big green waves, and uh, try to get more, even more people into the Chattahoochee and in, in this community. Oh, good. So maybe another uh, project in the future. So. So well, that's wonderful. That's fascinating. And, and uh, watching a competition down here, does, did you take a lot of pride in this? Are you yourself a, a freestyle paddler? Uh, I, I am not. I, I started bo boating back in the 70s, and my biggest ap accomplishment was probably doing a pirouette or something. <laughs> but uh, so, but uh, uh, I, uh, I'm not, not a freestyle boater by any means right now. All right. Are, 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 do you, are you more of a kayaker or canoeer? Just a, a kayaker. You kayaker. Yeah, oh, yeah, wonderful, yeah, wonderful. Went. And right now, where is your where? If, if someone wanted to find you online, how would they find this group, uh, your your actual company, to to maybe if someone's looking to to restore their their river in their community? Uh, so we have a website, uh, McLaughlin Whitewater. Uh, so if you Google that, uh, we'll come up and you'll see this project and and many others that we've done. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining me today uh, in in this you know World Cup freestyle final taking place right on a section of river that you had a hand in creating. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.
All right, I am Anna Bruno, and we are just minutes away from the junior women's kayak final here in Columbus, Georgia, Phoenix City, Alabama, US of A, on the Chattahoochee River on the Good Wave feature. So we have five junior women competitors, all of whom qualified through earlier this week, and they will be competing in reverse order from their preliminary round. So the first up to come will be Eleanor Knight out of Seattle, US of A, followed by Chloe Spears, Columbus, Georgia, USA, Sophie Gilfillan of Ontario, Canada, Neve Mackin of Great Britain, and McKinley Kate Hargrove of Columbus, Georgia. So we've got some talented young women about ready to throw down here on this Good Wave feature. In our finals round, we're gonna have three rides, only one ride, the single highest scoring ride for each athlete will count. They are fighting for one of those top three spots on the podium. So stay with us and we'll see what we have in store. I can see Eleanor as she is ferrying out right now and here she goes, dropping in. Catching a bit of an unfortunate face surf there and a bobble off the wave. So that will unfortunately mean that Eleanor does not score any points on her first ride, but fortunately she still has two more to go. So. That is the beauty of finals. You get a throwaway, you get the chance to go big, um, and you get the chance to really show this world stage here what, sh what you are capable of. Take a moment here just to really thank all of our sponsors, because it is a beautiful day here in the Chattahoochee River, and we would not be here without the help of Georgia Power putting on this beautiful water, without Uptown Columbus, um, without Synovus, without TY, TSYS, uh, without Michelob Ultra, without Coca-Cola, without Piranha, without the ICF, Beam, the American Canoe Association, and so many more. Next up, Chloe Spears of Columbus, Georgia, dropping in a recent plans tra transplant here to the Chattahoochee River. Chloe surprising herself with a medal in ambush earlier this week and some really nice rides yesterday on a feature that she admits still kind of intimidates her. So Chloe looking for a roundhouse, unfortunately catching her bow, maybe almost doing a loop there, but somehow retaining the feature and then unfortunately catching that bounce and heading out. So the scoreboard is still wide open here for our next three paddlers to put some points on the board. There, see that replay there of Chloe. You can see her get that first edge going, putting her paddle in, and unfortunately just not quite having the angle just right. And instead of having that boat rotate around the bow, she's unfortunately drops the bow, pearls it in, does a little porpoise move almost into that front loop. Still, shake the jitters off, Chloe. You got two more rides, and you got a whole lot of people here cheering for you. want to take a minute here just to recognize that the Chattahoochee, like many rivers in the United States and around the world, is a dam release river. And we are fortunate to have people like the American Canoe, Associ a Canoe Association and American Whitewater working on behalf of kayakers and river lovers to secure releases for the general public to help keep rivers flowing and to fight for the health and safety of rivers. So if you're not already a member of American Whitewater, I do encourage people here in the States to check that out and to find out more about threats to rivers worldwide from hydropower. See the thumbs up from head judge Danny O'Brien there as Canadian Sophie Gilfillan drops onto the wave. Sophie calling the Ottawa River home, a student at World Class Academy. She wants to sh earn her way onto that podium and she starts things off looking for a spin trying to get some points on the board. Judge is not fully liking that spin. We'll see why not here. She fights around for a back roundhouse or maybe even a roundhouse and unfortunately catching that edge and flushing off the feature on surfer's left. Ooh, good wave is mean today. <laughs> yeah, just watching that replay here. You know, what an opportunity for all of these young women to have the chance to compete in a final event. This is a lot of pressure. 
for any athlete, especially for our juniors, and for them to have the opportunity to go through from their preliminaries into their final takes a little bit of that pressure off, but they still all want to be on the top of that podium, and they are gonna be fighting for it with every ride they can. If you're just joining, three rides, one single ride score counts. Um, so we've got, we've got some fun times here ahead. Still two paddlers to go here in this first heat, or first ride round of our finals. And Neve Mackin out of Great Britain, paddling into the eddy. So Neve dropping in, looking to set things up. Spinning it around, trying maybe for a back roundhouse. Really, really fighting to stand that wave. You can see her using her edge control, using that carbon boat, using that retentiveness as she works her way onto the feature. Neve, a member of the GB team, competing in Nottingham, England, this past July at the World Championships where she did really well. So talented, stylish proud. They're showing things off with a nice roundhouse, maybe a blunt. There's that aerial blunt that she knows she's capable of going both directions as she tries to go to the left and then unfortunately spinning off the wave but that ride score will put her on the leaderboard. Let's watch the replay here as she drops in. Neve spinning it around right from the get-go, knowing, hey, 10 points is better than no points. I'm gonna get some points on the board and make this work for me. Showing great composure, competitive experience as she backs it up, trying to spin maybe back roundhouse the other direction. So 96.67, Neve's current ride score, and that will put her right now in first place. Still to go in this heat is hometown hero, McKinley Kate Hargrove. McKinley Kate already earning one gold medal in the Ambush World Cup earlier this week. And she is throwing down some legitimate rides here, big ride scores, and she's gonna be looking to showcase what she's capable of with a nice big air blunt to the right, followed right up trying to get that back blunt on the board. See if the judges choose to give that a back roundhouse or what they're thinking on that one. Again, trying to get those vertical angles to get the higher scoring points. Going back for that blunt, but of the clean blunt, maybe getting huge, maybe getting air in that, right into a back blunt or a back Pan Am. This is a fantastic ride for McKinley Kate as she goes for a blunt the other direction, trying for a back blunt the other way. What a ride. This is a fantastic showing and just some really strong, consistent paddling from McKinley Kate you can tell that this is her home feature of going for maybe a big air blunt, maybe even a Pan Am. Oh my goodness, she is stoked. That is the ride that she wanted, a little paddle catch to celebrate as she surfs off the wave. Fantastic ride from McKinley Kate. You can hear her parents and her family cheering there. Look at that, she just does such a great job of standing up on her edge, throwing that boat around with control, always looking back upstream stay in control. See that NRS sticker there right in her boat as she goes for that huge clean blunt to the right, absolutely, and then right into that back Pan Am. So huge ride for McKinley Kate. Really, really strong. Yeah, let's see that replay. I would say that's a probably a Pan Am as she goes to try and bring that oververt, and if nothing else, that was definitely a huge air blunt from McKinley Kate. Really, really strong ride, and she knows it. She's happy. McKinley Kate really showing that she has what it takes to compete with the best of the best, and she is wanting to show that she is going to be the person to be knocking off the podium for the junior women come next year for the World Championship, which will also be taking place here on Good Wave in Columbus. Huge ride score, 576.67. Um, she's going to be really, really happy with that. We still have two more rides here to go in this junior women's final. And right now, trying to earn herself some points, make her way onto the podium, Miss Eleanor Knight out of Seattle, Washington. Eleanor, a recent ad addition to the freestyle community, 
learning on the Sky Comish River, showing that she has some skills that are showing up with a beautiful roundhouse to the right, maybe even getting air on that. Spinning it around, making trying for a shove it the other direction. Oh, well she's gonna have to work to retain the feature and still points on the board for Eleanor. That is a good place to be sitting and she still has one more ride to go. can just see the water surging here. See that surfer's right curler where you get those good green passes. See that massive foam pile. This feature is a lot bigger than it looks <laughs> on the live stream, I promise you. And these junior women are doing a great job of moving around on that feature and making their tricks happen. Eleanor Knight coming with 21 points. That'll put her in third place, which is putting the pressure on Chloe Spears and Sophie Gilfillian still to come. Chloe shaking it off as she pumps herself up and gets ready to go. Chloe ferrying out onto the wave, knowing that this right here is the most important part of your ride, simply just catching the wave, retaining control as she puts that rudder stroke in to spin it around, looking maybe for a shove it. She tries to set up, going for that spin to the dir one direction, a huge aerial roundhouse, oh my goodness. We'll see if she managed to land that and stick that trick in time. Again, you must have the tricks land flat and in control. There must be a moment of pause before you flush off the feature for the judges to determine if you actually suck that. But look at that replay. Great air on that, working to get that full rotation, but unfortunately landing just outside the stick zone. Still, great practice for Miss Chloe Spears. And points on the board, which is looking up so 11.67 not enough to break her into that top three but still showing her comfort showing her confidence grow with each ride and now out of Canada World Class Academy student Sophie Gill Fillin Canadian junior slalom team paddler as well as the freestyle team Talented creek boater, river runner. This seen this girl throw down in a jib and a full slice kayak. She just loves being on the water. It is definitely her happy place. And she's just showing us why with a nice air roundhouse, maybe even an air blunt to the right, spinning it around, going for that roundhouse the other direction, working to get her edges under her on this very dynamic feature. Sophie backing it up. She knows she's done some front tricks. What is she going to try and do next? Going for that back blunt, struggling to get clear of the foam pile, which has been a challenge over in that side of the wave for every class today. Sophie continuing to spin it around. And that is time. A strong ride for Sophie Gifill, and that should be enough to put her currently on the podium, but there's still one more ride to go. Sophie taking advantage of that wave time to try one of those bigger moves, that air screw right there, which we have seen her do on the Ottawa. So 145 for Sophie, a fantastic ride from the young Canadian. Look at this replay here of Sophie's back blunt, nice and vertical. Neve Mackin of Great Britain paddling out. Neve sponsored by Flow Kayaks, a kayak shop over in Nottingham, helping young kayakers realize their dreams, starting things off with a nice spin both directions. Neve having some really big tricks earlier this week in the preliminary round, and I know that she's capable of putting down some big rides here, spinning it around the other direction, playing it safe before going for those higher scoring moves, trying maybe for a roundhouse there spinning out of it she doesn't quite get the edge she wants nice air blunt from neve on that one oh into a huge bounce the other direction not quite getting the edges under her but still managing to rotate the boat that was a, an enormous bounce from neve mackin so neve it looks like she'll be besting her first run score and she still has one more ride to go so yeah, bringing those, increasing that ride score total up to 100 points. Well done, Miss Mackin. She was 
She is the current junior British champion, and she classes a great day as any day paddling with friends. So I think today is a good day for her. All right, right now sitting on top with a 576 is McKinley Kate Hargrove. Hargrove, excuse me. She is going to be looking to show that that ride was not a fluke and that she is here to lay down. So McKinley Kate bouncing around there. Dropping a huge edge as she goes for a beautiful blunt. Somehow, oh, unfortunately, just catching the top of the wave, fighting her way back in, but that's all right. Still a big trick for McKinley Kate. So, McKinley Kate showing here that, you know, one trick can quickly add up with a lot of points on the board if you get the bonuses. So, going for that base trick of the blunt. Also trying to get the air bonuses, maybe even a huge bonus as she stands that boat up beautifully vertical. And then again, the judges are looking to say, did she land that trick? Could she have made it back onto the wave? And you see her fighting, fighting, fighting for it here. And unfortunately, just behind that flush line. So 130 points for her second ride, but she'll be sticking with ride score at number one. McKinley Kate, part of the Hargrove family here in Columbus helping a lot of other people learn to kayak, use, taking part of Team River Runner, um, teaching people to roll in the pool, teaching veterans. But right now, Eleanor Knight, ride number three. This is her chance to make it onto the podium. Eleanor coming up for the US Freestyle Team last year, deciding, man, this is super fun. I like this. I'm going to keep going it. So this is only really Eleanor's third big freestyle kayak competition, and she is just proving that she wants it. So spinning it around, starting things off with that roundhouse, going back for the roundhouse to try and make sure she sold it to the judges. Spinning it around the other direction, really showing nice composure and control as she already improves her ride score. Big air blunt, maybe a roundhouse from Eleanor. Strong, strong ride. Wow. What a great, great performance from Miss Knight out of Seattle. She and her dad, Christian, learning to paddle over on the Sky Comish River. Um, you know, they were paddling some grade two, three white water even before she had a roll. So this young lady is no stranger to white water, very confident and learning, you know, how to stay upright, use those edges, keep the boat in control, looking around to where she wants to go. Great replay of that spin there, right into that maybe air roundhouse. So Eleanor, 86.67. Currently still flashing. She needs to break 100 points. And unfortunately, even though a fantastic ride for Eleanor Knight, that will place her just off the podium for right now. Chloe Spears, however, is our next paddler here out of Columbus, Georgia. Stepdad Joe Ball, mom Jenny down there, and they are going, stepsister CJ, they're going to be cheering her on as she tries to make her way on to the podium. Bib number 21. I have a feeling that that bib might get being hung up on her wall at home after this event because she has just had a fantastic first World Cup. She's part of the JK Little Shredders. As she drops in here, another one whose first competition was at OKC, Oklahoma City, for the US Team Trials last year. She said, this is fun. I think I like this. I'm going to keep doing it, too. So Chloe trying to get that shove it on the board as she works to set up towards the surfer's right corner, spinning it around, staying in control. See her looking upstream, using that rudder stroke to stay nice and stable, flirting with that curler. She goes for the bounce to get that back roundhouse. Here she goes, backing it up, trying for a back roundhouse, maybe even a back blunt, right into a roundhouse the other direction. She wants it. She's pulling out all the stops, everything she has. There she goes on the buzzer as she tries for one more trick. Unfortunately, not quite getting her boat back to that full 180, but what a great ride for Chloe. I hope that this week has helped her conquer a little bit of those fears of Paddling such a big dynamic feature and also the challenging aspect or nature of paddling in public in front of your family and your friends on that world stage. So right now, Sophie Gilfillan in second place. She's going to be looking to try and best that score, establish a greater leave, lead over Neve Mackin. So what does she have to show for us?
Sophie paddling that carbon rock star. Bouncing around as she tries to surf on the wave, backing it up with a big back blunt, unfortunately kind of washing off in that curler. Still, Sophie showing that, hey, I've got the bigger tricks and I want you to know that I can do them. This event for many is a kind of a benchmark um, event where we get to kind of come out here, test out the feature, see what the venue's like, and go home and take this next year to say, I know what I need to work on so that I can compete at my best next year at the World Championship. The World Cups happen every other year. They are open to any competitor, all competitors who want to take place. While the World Championships, which also take place every odd year, you must, excuse me, you must be part of a national team to compete. So Canada already having had their selection, Sophie knows that she'll be out here next year. Sophie also competing in the C1 class earlier today. So great way for all paddlers to come out and experience the venue and gain some competition experience. Neve Mackin dropping in here. So Neve trying to break into the top one or two spots on the podium. She's got big air, she's got those big blunts, and she's gonna want to pull out all the stops here. She looks to break 100 points. Neve starting things off with a nice roundhouse to the right. Going back, repeating that trick, trying to get that verticality on it, really flirting with that surfer's right curler. She works to find the sweet spot on the wave. Neve maybe getting some air on that roundhouse on her second attempt there. Going for the blunt McNasty. Oh my goodness. You can tell that this paddler trains an HPP in Nottingham. Unfortunately, catching that early flush, but still that puts her into a bronze medal position. What an achievement for Neve, current junior British champion. And that means with one paddler left to go, this right here is gonna be a victory ride for McKinley Kate Hargrove of Phoenix City, Alabama. I can hear the cheers of the crowd is she's gonna look to throw down and try and I think even improve on that high ride score of 576, a little paddle twirl showing off to the crowd here as she takes her victory lap. This will be her second gold medal of this world championship. Starting things off with a nice big clean blunt to the right, trying for the clean blunt to the left, but not quite getting it. Still showing that control as she retains the feature, trying for that back Pan Am right off of that. Huge blunt, maybe a Pan Am to the left and an unfortunate flush, but still McKinley Kate showing the future is strong for junior women kayaking and she is a force to be reckoned with. So I'm guessing there's gonna be a lot of cheers as well as a lot of comparing of point rides here for the future. McKinley Kate, what a fantastic way to showcase her home river, her home feature and all the hard work that she has put into this past year of paddling. So, so much improvement here from McKinley Kate, so much improvement from our junior women's class and all of them will be looking to do even better come next year at the World Championship. So McKinley Kate's ride score 343.33, not topping her huge first ride, but still really solidifying her place on top of the podium. So that right there is our junior women's final, taking the gold McKinley Kate Hargrove, followed by Sophie Gilfillan of Canada and Neve Mackin of Great Britain. Congratulations to all of our athletes and a massive thank you once again to all of our sponsors, to Georgia Power, to Uptown Columbus, to every single person here, Synovus, TSYS, all those working to make this event happen. We appreciate you. And Thavu will be back here very shortly for the men's, the junior men's final, uh, excuse me, the junior men's final. I'll be checking back in to find the time for that. Give me just a minute. I believe that will be taking place in about 20 minutes. Shout out to Nanny and Grandpa John and their camper. 
and Waitangi watching Mateo. for Mateo. Well, but that's the wrong class, Nick, so he's not competing quite yet. So we'll save that. But just for those watching, thank you so much, and we'll be back here shortly.
first up, we have Walker Evans. All right, Walker Edens is fairing out. He is about to drop into the wave. In the wave he goes, he is setting up for a nice blunt to the right, spinning it around. Again, getting some nice points on the board, trying to set up again. He knows he's gonna need some big points. He's doing a nice right spin currently at 88 points, he's going to want to up that score. Unfortunately, he flushes. Luckily, he has two more rides. Just showing that replay of that really nice blunt for Walker. He's currently sitting at 111 points. So a pretty solid first ride. And he will get two more rides before to show what he's got. All right, next up we have Oni Aronen from Finland. He is a really confident paddler. He was 11th at Worlds. And claimed second place at the finish cup. He's spinning it around, looking for a pass, coming down the wave, doing a nice big blunt, already surpassing Walker's score with 150 points, still climbing, a huge air screw, and he lands it, he's back in the wave, trying to set up for another trick. He's spinning around, there he goes for another huge Pan Am. Wow, this is just a huge ride for Oni. His One of his ambitions is top three in Junior Worlds, and he might do it in this competition. Jeez, that was an amazing ride for Oni Aronen. I'm Eleanor Knight, and soon I'll be joined by Sophie Gilfillan. The score is still bumping up and down. Right now we're sitting at 418 points, so a massive ride for Oni. He should be so proud of this ride. All right, Landon Miller, drop it in to the feature. This is the men's, junior men's kayak surface finals for the World Cups. Oh. Landon dropping in, going for his first trick, but having an unfortunate paddle drop. Still getting in there, spinning around. Going in for a nice, beautiful, big Pan Am, but having an unfortunate flush, it's okay. Everyone, because this is finals, you have three rides. The best one counts, so you have two throwaway rides. So this may be one of Landon's throwaway rides. All right, Landon's score sitting at around 10 points right now. Not a huge score for now, but he'll have two rides to improve this. The judges are waiting to finalize Landon's score. I can get the Okay, Landon score coming in with 10 points, which will put him into third place. Next up, we have Nanase 
Nanase got Nanase got third at the World Championships in Nottingham, England. He is ready to throw down. Starting things off maybe with the clean blunt as we see Nanase get massive clean blunts just like that one. But having an unfortunate flip, still flip, still staying and maintaining the feature, going for a clean bunt the other direction, racking up points on the board. Nanase going in for a nice air screw into a blunt to the left. Still about 10 seconds on the clock, serving around, looking for his next trick. Going in for the blunt McNasty and staying in the feature. That, that was a pretty big ride for Nanase. That was an incredible ride for Nanase. Throwing up his hands. He is stoked with that ride as he comes off of it. And he still has two more to go, but this ride is solidly putting him into first place. Right now, 650 points. Still going up, though. See what the judges have to say about this. Some of Nanase's favorite hobbies include just like physical fitness and working out. We can see the power that he puts in to this feature. This feature is a powerful one. As we see, he's getting a ton of air under that kayak, wasting no time. And then his nice blunt McNasty to finish up his ride right on the buzzer. All right, the score is now finalized at 665 points. This is a really big ride. And Mateo Williams is next. He'll be wanting to break 665 points in order to take over the first place spot. Mateo Williams dropping straight into the feature, representing New Zealand. Starting things off with a nice blunt, pulling it around. Going into a blunt slash round toss the other direction. It's already off to a solid start with 108 points. Looking to increase that score. Going into a back round toss into a blunt. Going in for a massive back blunt or back pan am. We will see the judges give him that. Just flushing off of the bubbles in the back of the foam pile. But he did land it, but he did flush quite quickly afterwards. We'll have to see if the judges give him this trick or not. Doesn't look like the score is going up much. We'll have to see. Mateo's greatest ambition in life is finding a sugar mama. <laughs> wow, Mateo. <laughs> All right, Mateo's score coming in with an 141 points. Next up, we're going to start to this top of the heat list with everybody's second rides with Walker Edens. This is Walker's first Worlds, and he's already in finals, which is a pretty impressive feat. Walker's first ride coming in with 111 points. He's going to want to up his score to be on the podium. Looking for a pass, but not quite getting the balance he needs. Going in for a back blunt, but having an unfortunate flush. It's okay. He only he still has one more red left, and he is still and he is still in fourth place. Yeah, Walker will be looking to increase his score to at least 142 points to get onto that podium. We are waiting for the time timer to finish going, and next up we are going to have. Let me pull it up. <laughs> Oni from Finland. Oni from Finland, a very competitive paddler. He was 11th at Worlds in Nottingham, England, and I believe he placed in the in the on the podium in this last World Cup on Ambush Rapids. Okay, we have Oni dropping in for. His second run of three. 
Starting things off with a big blunt into a background pass, back blunt. Serving around, getting set for his next trick, going in for a blunt. Then going in for a massive air screw, maybe donkey flip. We'll see what the judges give him. And he still maintains a feature, going in for the donkey flip the other direction. This is an incredible ride by Oni so far. Looking to make some more big tricks. Going in for the roundhouse into a back blunt, maybe back pan in. We'll see what the judges are going to give him for that. Spinning it around, getting set up, putting the points on the board. Oh, going in for the donkey flip again and having an unfortunate flush. It's okay. He put tons of points on the board, and we will see. I think that with the points that, with what the points are looking at, sorry, that's going to put him nicely into second place. Yeah, he definitely have to score a lot there, making it even harder to squeeze into that second place position. Next up, we have Landon Miller. As we see, Oni got tons of air under that apex boat. Landon Miller in fifth place with only 10 points right now. We know that he can really throw some great tricks, so we'll have to see what he does. Oni score coming in with a 538 points. Next up, we have Landon Miller smiling at the head judge. This is his third finals today. He qualified for finals in C1, OC1, and now K1. Dropping in, starting off with a massive Pan Am. He is going big. He wants to be up on the podium today also. Spinning around, going for a back roundhouse into a back blunt. Going for the blunt the other direction. Turning it around, looking for more tricks. He's solidly in third place right now, but he'll definitely want to get some more points on the board. Going in for a nice back, but maybe back Pan Am. Trying to set up for that final trick on the buzzer. Oh, unfortunately not getting the height he wanted, but ending with a nice little trash. <laughs> Landon score coming in around 350. We will see what the judges are going to give him. Watching that replay, showing Landon's super big blunts and back blunts. As we wait for the points to settle, he'll be hoping to up that score even more for his third run. Points are rising, about 390 points right now. giving him a solid spot in third place. Okay, a score finalizing with 391 points, which will put him nicely into third place. Next up, we have Nanase from Japan. Coming in with that sparkly kayak, he is ready to throw down Total score is about 665 points, so he's going to want to up it. Let's see what he has in store for us. Honestly, dropping in. Trying to set up. Not quite getting that pass. That's okay. He's going to set up again. Taking his time. There we go for that huge Pan Am, but unfortunately flushing right off the end. That's unfortunate. Luckily, he'll have one more ride to improve his score. Nanase sitting pretty comfortably in first place. 
but we still have everybody to finish up their second runs and then go into their third run, so we never know. All right, next up, Mateo Williams from New Zealand, technically living in the United States, but representing New Zealand anyway. He is dropping in. Honestly, that is the scariest part of the ride, is trying to catch the wave. Mateo dropping in for his second run of three, going in for a nice, beautiful blunt, maybe Pan Am. Surfing around, trying to get set up. Going in for a blunt the other direction into a nice back blunt. Spinning around, going for a massive, huge back Pan, Pan Am. <laughs> going in for a Pan Am to the left. Serving around, getting set up. 15 seconds left. He has plenty of time. Going in for a big donkey flip and maintaining the feature still. About two seconds left. Going in for the McNasty to end, not quite pulling it around in the wave, but that was a really good run from Mateo Williams. That is a solid ride, already putting him into second place. And the score is not even finalized yet. We'll see what the judges give him for those huge tricks he just threw. All right, we can see it in the replay now, Mateo Williams, huge, clean, back blunt. That was just gorgeous. He was just throwing down this ride. His score is still bouncing around the 600 point mark. Mateo Williams is no stranger to competition. He got fifth place in Nottingham Worlds this past June and podiumed in the World Cups. That score is still bumping up and down. Mateo Williams from Asheville, North Carolina. Throwing down some pretty big rides as we see he went for his McNasty there, but didn't quite pull it around fast enough. N next up, we are gonna have Walker Edens to start off our third and final runs. Mateo score coming in with a 6-15, so that puts him nicely into second place right behind Anise. Fortunately, Mateo couldn't quite claim that first place position, but he still has one more ride to do so. Mateo, or Walker Edens, looking to throw down. This is his final ride. Walker dropping straight into good wave, going in for a blunt roundhouse to start things off into a back blunt, spinning around, trying to get back to the top of the wave, but having an unfortunate flush that is it for Walker Edens. He will claim fifth place in the junior men's finals. Still a solid run by Walker Edens. I believe this is one of his first international competitions and making it to finals, very, very impressive. His score coming in with a 68, so he'll keep his first run score of 100 and 11 points. Next up, we have Ani from Finland. All right, Ani's dropping in. He is gonna wanna claim that first place. He's already podiumed, well, not yet. <laughs> he is in third place currently with a 538 points, but he is going to one up that score. He wants to get higher on top of the podium going around for a nice blunt, spinning it around. Going for a blunt the other direction. He's throwing his biggest tricks right now. 
Going for it, paddling up, 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 up. Ah, oh, unfortunately, Oni could not make it into the wave. He is still sitting very comfortably in third place with the 538. Definitely a solid ride by Oni. Now he'll just have to wait and see if Landa Miller can push him off the podium. As we see, he got tons of air under that kayak. Next up, we have Landon Miller. He is currently in fourth place with the 391, but he is going to want to step up his score and make it into third, fourth, or first place. Coming in for his last ride, going in for a nice blunt, but having an unfortunate flush. Uh, unfortunately, Landon could not pull off the ride he needed to get onto the podium, but he'll be happy with fourth place. He made it to three finals, and that is a big deal. Landon pretty good in all the disciplines. He competed, like Eleanor was saying, in C1, K1, and OC1. So he is doing well in all sorts of boats. Next up, we have Nanase and Mateo. So we know who the top three are. We know who are getting medals. We have Oni in third place, Mateo in second, and Nanase in first. We will see who is going to take the top three. All right, Nanase, he is sitting in first place right now. Nanase, of course, winning to up his score, because why not? He's worked so hard for this. He is dropping into the wave, looking for his first pass, not quite getting it. It's okay, he's setting up at the top. Oh, okay. going for a clean bunk possibly, but not quite getting the pass. It's okay. He still has plenty of time left. Going in for a massive air blunt. That clean blunt. <laughs> going in for a back roundhouse, spinning it around. Going for a clean blunt the other direction, but not quite getting the boat out from under him. There we go. He fixed it. He knows what he has to do to get the points he wants. Looking for his next trick. Going into a massive air screw and still staying in the feature. We don't see a lot of the junior men throwing air screws and helixes. Nanase uh, th wow. absolutely throwing down in this ride, possibly breaking his score, but we will see what the judges give him. Nice third run from Nanase. Wow. Struggled a little bit at the beginning to find his passes, but once he did, he just started throwing down. That was an incredible ride by Nanase. As we see, Nanase got tons of air under that kayak. Look at that clean blunt. Now all he has to do is wait and hope that Mateo Williams or Oni doesn't knock him off the podium. Last up, we have Mateo Williams right after Nanase's score gets finalized. He is the only one that can change Nanase's score. As we see Nanase throw that massive helix. Mateo Williams is already in second place, so already claiming a podium position, but we all know he wants gold. He wants to win this, and he has to break 665 points to do so. His score is finalized at 630 points, so he's going to take his first ride score of 665. Nanase should definitely be happy with that score. But next up, we have Mateo Williams, the only person that can change the leaderboards up here. Mateo representing New Zealand, coming in for his final ride of Junior Men's Finals. Dropping in, surfing around, going in for a nice blunt to start things off. 
going in to make it a possible Pan Am. Serving in, going in for a back around house. Going in for a flashback, both directions. Looking for his next trick, going in for a big Pan Am. Just 15 seconds on the clock. See what tricks he's gonna throw for us next. Spinning around, trying to get set up on top of the wave. Going in for a big pan, a big air screw, sorry. The other direction. Looking for the blunt, making nasty, oh, but up, having up. an unfortunate oh. flush. We will see what the judges give Mateo for that run. Currently sitting at 480 points. I'm sure the score is gonna climb. We'll have to wait and see if it goes up almost 200 points more to put him in the first place. As we see in the replay, Mateo getting so much air under that rock star V. Such a good ride by Mateo Williams. His score finalizing with a 480, so we'll put him in second, second place. place. So we know our medalists. First, in first place, we have Nanase from Japan. In second place, we have Mateo Williams representing New Zealand and Oni from Finland. Nice job to all the junior men's, and make sure to stay tuned for the next competition. We have two finals left. We have the the women's finals and the men's finals. So stay tuned for that. For now, we'll take a quick break and be right back. I'm Eleanor. And I'm Mickey Lee Kate. Bye. See ya.